them, this is their job, they do this all the time. I'm Youssef Rafiq and I'm a zoologist and former zookeeper. I've spent years working with animals, so I know how tough, but also rewarding, it can be. But now I want to try some of the more unusual wildlife jobs out there and meet the dedicated people behind them to find out if I have what it takes. In this building live nearly 200 of the world's most deadly snakes, looked after by a dedicated team of experts who put their lives on the line every single day in order to work at the very cutting edge of anti-venom research. And I'm going to be spending 24 hours with them. This is the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, where I'll be meeting with herpetologist Paul, who has a lifelong interest in collecting venom from deadly snakes. Also known as snake milking, this process is harmless when done correctly, but it's essential for studying venom and creating anti-venoms, which save thousands of lives each year. Today, I'll be joining the team for some venom extractions, but first, I want to ask Paul a few questions. Hi, Paul. Hello. So how long have you worked with snakes? I um, started my career in the 80s, um, originally as a zookeeper at Chester Zoo, and I've been here for nearly the last 30 years. That's incredible, because obviously everyone's aware that venomous snakes are dangerous. How much of an impact do they have around the world? Well, we estimate there's about 2.7 million envenomings a year, um, about 138,000 deaths worldwide, and probably around about 400,000 uh, disabilities um, resulting from those bites. Have you ever been bitten? Unfortunately, yes, it is oh. an occupational hazard. I've been hospitalised uh, three times in my career, uh, but we're very, very fortunate in having a hospital literally across the road here and some of the world's best clinicians um, that are capable of dealing with snake bites here in Liverpool. So in a way, if you're going to get bitten by a snake, this is the best place. If you're going to do it, this is the place <laughs> to do it. OK, I mean, we're going to meet some of these venomous snakes in a minute, so it's making me a little bit nervous that you've been Absolutely no worries at all. You're in good hands I'm here. In safe hands, that's good to know. Right, we'll go and check room four to start with. OK. And then we'll do the environmental checks mm -hmm. and we'll have a look at some of the uh, snakes in this room. Amazing. Oh, oh wow, cobras yeah. straight away. On this side of the room we've got mainly forest cobras. These are um, a very dangerous cobra, uh, African species. Snakes evolve venom to help them hunt. When a snake is feeling threatened, venom is also handy as a defence, which is why so many people get bitten each year. All of the snakes in this collection have deadly venom, but only one has been a confirmed killer. What's the most interesting or unique way that they've come into your possession? But when I started, we actually had a, um, a forest cobra in the collection. And that, the story behind that one was it was uh, used by a mafia gangsters to murder somebody in a hotel room in New York. And so this person was found dead in a hotel room. And uh, the police obviously got involved. And the forensic scientists, uh, they did an analysis, uh, sent us some tissue. So we were able to analyze it and discovered the venom uh, of a forest cobra right. was the cause of death and the Bronx Zoo uh, captured the forest cobra and sent okay. it to us. So we ended up with not only a known killer yeah. in the collection but also tissue samples from the victim and we were able to pair them up and confirm the cause of death. Wow. So that was a mafia hit uh, in the that's, early 90s. That's incredible yeah. isn't it? Wow. After meeting the snakes in Paul's care we make our way to the procedure room. Once we've done some prep Paul and Ed begin by extracting venom from a puff adder. So for safety reasons, I can't be in the room with them right now, because as you can see, it's a loose venomous snake. Uh, quite aggressive, so I'm quite thankful that I'm out here right now. The puff adder is a viper that is thought to be responsible for causing the most snake bites in Africa, of which 50% are fatal if untreated. And this one is feeling especially Ooh. grumpy. Oh dear me. Right, okay. This is nerve wracking. This is their job. They do this all the time. The team works hard to gain control before I enter the room. Now that it's safely restrained, it's time to extract the venom. 
Snake venom is a complex cocktail of toxins. The deadliest type of venom, like that from a black mamba, shuts down the nervous system and can kill a human in as little as 20 minutes. Neurotoxic venoms can be delivered without a lot of pain, so some people might not realise they've been bitten until they can feel the symptoms. Next, Paul and Ed tackle the spectacled cobra, which requires slightly more wrangling. Cobra venom is typically cytotoxic, which means that bites kill cells, causing severe skin blistering and can lead to loss of limbs if untreated. This means that even if someone survives the bite, complications can leave people with life-changing injuries. We finish with a sore-scaled viper. Despite being the smallest species in the room, even a weak bite that only injects a small amount of venom could still be enough to kill multiple people. There we go. Venom extracted, Ed tells me a little more about one of our samples. So there is some of the venom from the animal. Oh, wow. That is probably enough to kill someone. Wow. So it's a potent neurotoxic venom. Okay. That's more than enough for our research. And it, it's a descending paralysis in this. So once okay. it hits the lungs, if you haven't got something to ventilate yeah. or manually ventilate the lungs, unfortunately, a lot of people will suffocate. Right. Um, and that's the rapid onset of these venoms. That's terrifying. If you can get to a hospital, though, the treatment is very effective. Okay. How long have you got? Uh, we usually talk about the, the golden hour, yeah. um, but as soon as you can get to okay. hospital is the best. Now that the venom is safely stored, I can carefully transport it to a lab in another part of the building where the team research anti-venom. I have a few questions for Cassie about her research and about what anti-venom researchers are hoping to achieve long term. Anti-venoms are made by injecting snake venom into horses and then using their immune reaction to make an antidote. It's a process that's more than 100 years old and scientists are looking for better alternatives. So you mentioned that you work on making novel antivenoms. Why is it that we need new ones? Um, for one, it'd be nice to move away from the animals because different animals respond differently. So we'd like a consistent product. In the future, we hope that we'll be able to use protein expression systems like bacteria, yeast, mammalian cell culture, um, et cetera, that we can then produce antibodies from and then we will no longer need to use the animals. How expensive is antivenom? So it's about, for sub-Saharan Africa, it's 100 to 200 USD uh, per vial. But okay. if you're bitten by a snake and it's a very severe bite, you'll actually need multiple vials. And right. so it can easily go up over to 1,000, um, which is considerably more than um, a farmer that's working is making in that, that region. Um, in fact, snake bite really impacts the um, impoverished communities the greatest. So that's why your work is so important then, because it's helping with that issue. Exactly, and reduce the cost of anti-venom. Yeah, mm -hmm. brilliant. It's been absolutely incredible to spend time with the team here, and it's amazing to think that the venom processed in this lab goes on to save lives all around the world, and that through this research, antivenoms for the world's deadliest snake bites could one day be accessed more easily and affordably by those who need it most. <laughs>